This is Find Your Dream Job, the podcast that helps you get hired, find the career you want, and make a difference in life. I'm your host, Mac Pritchard. I'm also the founder of MaxList. It's a job board in the Pacific Northwest that helps professionals find fulfilling careers. To get your dream job, you need clear goals, great skills, and a good network. You also have to know how to look for work. One of the best ways to get good at job hunting is to talk to people who do it well. That's why once a month, I interview a MaxList reader who found a job they love. Our guest shares how they did it and offers their best job search tips. Today, I'm talking to Johnny Hartman. He's the Director of Research and Development at Elevate Pictures in Columbus, Ohio. Johnny Hartman believes in the power of relationships. In a story you can find on the MaxList website, Johnny says that tapping into his personal network made a difference. He also says he faced two big challenges in his job search. Employers thought he was overqualified and said that his skills were too specialized. Now Johnny has been in his role for almost two years, and he joins us today here in Portland at the MaxList studio to share how he found his dream job. Johnny, welcome to the show. Thanks. Thanks so much for having me. Well, it's a pleasure, and I appreciate you coming downtown I, uh, to share your job search story. And you're the director of research and development at Elevate Pictures. Why do you love your job, Johnny? I love my job because I get to not only feed my technical side, but I get to feed my creative side. And I kind of did that in reverse because my job description makes you think that, uh, you know, I'm a very kind of technical person. And my kind of joke or little tagline has always been technically I'm creative because I've done all of these technical production and technical roles in the creative industry for a very long time. And um, it's just uh, being able to, to make pallies come to life and, you know, uh, I, those I have kinds to ask, of what's things. a pally? So pallies are the uh, alien helpers of the Ultra Squad, which is a graphic novel we're doing right now with our partner, Justice, uh, for our Justice Studios project. So, Okay, so um, you're creating artificial worlds or alien yeah, worlds we, well, the, every at the, day. At the core of what five. I do, I build story worlds, and that's really where my passion is and where... I got inspiration from mentors like people like Jeff Gomez, who's a who's a mentor of mine, and and really just you know being able to kind of live that dream of how to tell engaging stories on one side, and then the other side of my world because I run a lab is uh, a lot of my work is in the medical side. So we're doing a whole bunch of stuff in and around vision therapy and helping people to heal from traumatic brain injuries and things like that, which. It's like, how did we get here? But honestly, it's the tool set of the industry. So the 3D tools that are high in demand for uh, you know, 3D visual effects in the motion picture industry are the same tools being used in AR and VR and medicine. Well, that's fascinating. So you have a, a foot in two different, very different worlds. Yes. You're creating these fictional stories, but you're also working in healthcare and, and helping to make a difference in people's lives, aren't you? That's really where I kind of get this awesome Zen balance of like the fun and creativity and passion of things that I've been writing and doing and getting to work with writers and creatives all the time. And then on the other side, being able to work with you know doctors and different people to kind of put together these structures for how do we visualize and do these 3D stories. And really it becomes... Uh, like the game mechanics become very similar for the training mechanics for people in these simulations for the medical side, as well as, hey, we're going to build an iOS game or we're going to do a, you know, whatever that is on the other side of the entertainment house. Cool. Well, let's talk about your job search. Mm-hmm. I know it, it took you about 10 months to find this position. Oh, yes. Yeah. What, what were your biggest challenges, Johnny? Well, I... I went and decided not to kind of pull full anchor and went and worked in Ohio for about a a little over, probably about 18 months. Uh, But my family stayed here. And, you know, some things didn't all pan out there, and I just couldn't stay separated and couldn't move justify moving my family. So I came back. I started looking. So that was a position that didn't work out correct. before Elevate Pictures. Correct. Okay. Um, but uh, you, you were in Ohio, and then you came back to work. Correct. And, and the reason I wanted to mention that is that's actually where I initially met uh, Jeremy and these folks, and, and through my network there, kind of connected to them, and, and it'll all kind of come back into a circle. But um, So I came back home. I started talking with a, lot, a couple of 
uh, let's just call them extremely large agencies in town and doing the dance. And, you know, I think one of them I probably had in the teens of people that I talked to and interviewed with within their agency. Um, and then I talked to a lot of smaller and midsize and friends of mine who were like, oh, you know, I'd have always wanted to work with you, but you've always done this such crazy wild things in L.A. and Louisiana and worked in the entertainment industry. And I mean, I'd just done four feature films uh, or five, actually, if you count the pre-production. Um, anyway, so that kind of put me in an awkward spot in Portland. While it's very innovative and there's lots of things going on. Uh, oft times I would find myself in situations where they're like, wow, you know, like we're not really doing a feature and that's what you just did. Or so it really came to like, I've done a lot more things in my career and I can help you in a lot more ways um, in how I position myself. So you had a lot of experience and some of, and obviously very impressive and some of it uh, kinds of experiences that typical agencies might not have employees uh, with those backgrounds who, Right, or you, you if, they, if they did, there was only like one position that was like the director, you know, so those positions weren't sitting open at that point. So I hear this a lot from job seekers. I wonder if you did too, but uh, from people who are farther along in their career, were people telling you, Johnny, that you were overqualified? Absolutely. I mean, the... Uh, I literally had at least five people look me in the eye and say, I'd hire you tomorrow, but I feel like, you know, I'd only get about... I'd only act occupy about 10% of you or be able to utilize about 10% of what we really needed to, what we really needed to do. And um, so, you know, I kind of stepped back and really what I did is I poked my head up beyond Oregon. And really, I, so I should stipulate that a lot of mine was, I'm fortunate enough to be in a position in my life of, I just went to Ohio and decided I really missed the Northwest. Like, I did not want to leave the Northwest. And um, so... So you, this, you had this challenge. You were overqualified. You recognized you wanted to stay in the Northwest, especially in Portland. What happened next, Johnny? So I, you know, I, I looked out on the horizon. There was a number of opportunities in Los Angeles. I found a company here locally, went through, was looking at a pretty senior media position, and got to their executives, and then we had a conversation, and they said, oh, we want to move the position to New York. And I was like, you know, we'd already started talking about salary and everything, and I'm like, yeah, we really, like, that's a different conversation because the money would have to be substantial to even consider it. So how did you get connected with your current employer, Elevate Pictures? Because now you've been there two years. Correct. They're in Ohio. You're still in Portland. I'm mm -hmm. guessing you're working remotely. You're not commuting to Columbus Correct. every we're, Monday. We're actually building out the, the Portland office of okay. Elevate. So tell us how that happened. So we um, initially connected. Uh, we, so I was, I was brought in to build this... Um, state-of-the-art post-production facility is how it was pitched to me. And there was quite a bit of money on the table. So I came in as the VP of technology and built out um, 4K real-time workflows and a bunch of stuff for building out a post-processing studio. So and you did that here in Portland? No, this was in Ohio, Columbus, okay. Ohio. So you actually went back to Ohio? Correct. All right. And um, these folks were coming in. They were looking at our facilities to potentially do color and you know post production processes within the facility. And I got to meet these guys. We the, we met again at a at a Christmas party. Um, you know, fast forward a number of years later, uh, a colleague of mine who was working with me at that studio was then working for them, and you know they had. Uh, an issue that they needed to address specifically with this formulation of building this studio back in the day when they were putting this together, because this was an extremely long process that, you know, as you can imagine with a large corporation, you have a, a long legal process with anything of this stature and size. So Elevate Pictures had a problem. They needed to get this facility built. and you So had, they brought me in as a consultant. Right. And, and you started going back to Ohio. Yeah, we did a couple of trips back and forth. And then I kind of laid out some structure around how we, you know, kind of laid out some framework stuff. And we just started working together on presentations and building things out. And and, and it was a project. It wasn't a position. Correct. Okay. Um, and and we, we'd kind of talked about it at the beginning. The other thing is, is I was in a, un a fairly unique position in that I had some IP that... 
And tell us intellectual our property. I'm okay, uh, specifically on. So I talk about two kinds of IP in my world. Some of it's entertainment. Some of it's like technology. And this specifically is a technology IP. And so we, you know, I was able to also integrate that as part of the package and how we got, uh, how I ended up getting this position. Okay, so you were open to a short-term project that required some travel. Uh, I wasn't just your ideal uh, opportunity, but it came to you because you had the skills and they had a problem and there was a match and you, you took a, a risk here. You, yeah. And did you think it would lead to a permanent position, Johnny? I, I hoped it would and, 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 you know, we all kind of hoped it would. The big, you know, there was a big linchpin here in that this, this process and this project kind of had to prove out and we had a, a whole series of uh, video, you know, basically meet milestones or metrics that we had to meet and that, you know, I was involved in and um, uh, we hit them and things went really well. So, you know, that, that ended up helping uh, immensely because then monies opened up and this partnership, you know, flourished. And okay. So you created an opportunity for yourself and, and you touched on this a moment ago. You talked about your uh, relationship with someone in the company. And you mentioned this in your article, too, about the importance of your network. Tell us more about how your network helped you not only find this opportunity, but turned it into a permanent position. Yeah, I, I got to say, a lot of this goes back to kind of what I've felt from a social standpoint that I've done and actively kind of cultivated from the beginning. So I used to teach a uh, social media class, and I started back in like 2008. So most of my class at that, or a lot of my class didn't even have a Facebook account. So it's a totally different world. But what I used to always say is I think the most powerful um, at, at that point uh, social network was LinkedIn. And people would say, well, why do you say that? And I said, well, because I sat in the room with the C. MO of uh, Adidas because of LinkedIn, because I was able to make some connections, put the right things in front of the right people, you know, kind of lay out the pitch, get it structured, and, and then do some creative, innovative things to get his attention to then get my meeting. And that was all facilitated through my, net, my personal network and using this tool LinkedIn, a social network, to create the pathways to be able to explain this concept. Unfortunately, it was right after they spent all the money on that Star Wars Cantina campaign and they didn't go through with it, but it did get me in the room. Oh, that's great. Well, uh, are there other techniques that you use during your search besides LinkedIn and networking to, uh, uh, that, that were helpful that you'd recommend to our listeners? Really, the one thing I would say that I did a lot of, which, you know, uh, you know, you, you can only rewrite your <laughs> cover letter and your resume so many times. So one of the things I did is I just went back through my contacts. And honestly, I think at one point I pulled out a box of old business cards that probably weren't in. And I just kind of like thought about who those people were and went, is really, what do I want to do with myself? And, and okay, I haven't talked to this person in a long time. Maybe I need to connect. And then it sounds a little stalkery, but it's the kind of the way of the world is go see what they're saying on Twitter and stuff like that and start to engage people in conversation, which is a lot of honestly what I teach in my class and things like that for um, uh, back in the days with PSU and now at OSU. Um, it's just go out there and nurture that personal connection that you have to go and say, hey, you know, don't go and ask for a job. Just say, hey, do you know of anything that's out there? Have you seen anything in this you know, this is my passion. I want to be, I, you know, I want to do this entertainment and R&D, you know, my thing or whatever your thing is. And then just ask, you know, don't feel like you're asking them for a job. Just ask them if they've seen any jobs. And that, that goes a long way because people really will, you know, oh, yeah, so-and-so, you know. So I think a lot of people kind of get lost in that, you know, if I just rewrite this cover letter one more time, this is going to be perfect. Yeah. And then... Good. Well, I, I really appreciate you recommending that people step away from the computer and, and get out there and talk to folks. Um, Johnny, what's your number one job hunting tip? I would say number one is do your homework. Before you get on the phone, especially at a certain level in your career, when you can get away with it when you're younger, okay? But as you get older and you walk in the room, you really need to know who you're talking to and what they're up to. And ideally, if you can do your research well enough, what they're going to be doing. 
so that you can position yourself in a way to say, hey, I know you want to expand into the Southwest arena in tire sales. And I know Larry, that you know, so-and-so in Arizona, and he's got a million tires for sale or whatever that is. But do that, do that homework. Okay. Yeah. Understand people's needs and position yourself as a problem solver. And that's a great tip. Well, Johnny, thanks for the advice and for sharing your story. Uh, you can learn more about Johnny Hartman's job search by visiting maxlist.org slash stories. And check out the MaxList website. We have dozens of other success stories like Johnny's. Every Friday, we add a new interview with a MaxList reader who's found a dream job. Go to maxlist.org slash stories. In the meantime, thank you for listening to today's bonus episode of Find Your Dream Job. <laughs>